In today's video, I'm going to show you some dimes that sold for a whole lot more than what a dime should sell for. You'll learn how to identify these rare dimes. All of the sales in this video are real and they're from Heritage Auctions. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Enjoy. Let's start off this dime list with an air coin that mysteriously made it out of the mint. This is a 1972 San Francisco minted proof coin. Proof coins are specifically made for collectors. They have a shiny finish, and they're minted with more pressure for a more crisp look. This dime was double struck. It doesn't look like it lined up properly in the press since both strikes are off center. This dime should have been included in a proof set, but somehow it made it out of the mint. It was graded proof 65 on a scale from 1 to 70, and it sold at auction for $1,800. Air coins are fun to look for, and a lot of times they're obviously different and easily identifiable as more valuable. This isn't the case with real collectible coins like this one right here. This dime may not look like much. It's a 1999 Denver minted Roosevelt dime. It was graded Mint State 69 FB. FB or full bands is a designation referring to the two sets of bands around the torch on the reverse of this dime. This picture is too blurry to see the bands. Here's a better one. To qualify for this designation, the coin must grade at least MS60, show full separation between the upper and lower horizontal bands on the torch, and show no significant cuts or marks across the horizontal bands. The image on the left does not qualify for full bands, but the image on the right does qualify for the FB designation. This dime sold at auction for $1,800. Here's another collectible dime from 1980. This one was minted in Denver. As far as grades go, this one is mid-range for Mint State. It graded Mint State 66 with the full bands designation. This dime sold for $2,880, and here's why. Even though a grade of Mint State 66 on a scale from 1 to 70 doesn't seem impressive, there haven't been any 1980 Denver minted dimes that graded higher. In fact, there's only two of these known to exist. One was graded by PCGS and the other was graded by NGC. You might want to check your dime album and compare it to the photo grade on PCGS.com and see if it looks like a higher grade than the one right here. Here's an error coin that you won't find in pocket change. You'll have to check your 1983 proof set if you have one. Proof dimes were minted in San Francisco in 1983, and each one of them should have the letter S above the year. There were several proof sets for this year that contained proof dimes with no mint mark at all. Don't be fooled by circulation strike no mint mark dimes. A coin without a mint mark usually means it was minted in Philadelphia. This 1983 no mint mark proof dime graded proof 70 the highest grade possible, and it sold at auction for $8,225. Here's a rough-looking 1959 Roosevelt dime. This dime is made up of 90% silver because it was minted before 1965. There's no error on this coin, and it doesn't look like it's in good shape. Or does it? Would you believe this dime graded mint state 68? The discoloration is natural toning, and that doesn't affect the grade. It was even given the full band designation. It's a good thing this dime wasn't cleaned. It would have severely affected the value of the coin. This dime sold at auction for $8,812. Talk about toning. The orange, red, and purple on the front and back of this dime look awesome. This silver dime was minted in 1955 at the Philadelphia Mint. It graded Mint State 68 on a scale from 1 to 70 by PCGS. This Roosevelt dime sold at Heritage Auction for $9,300. In 1965, the U.S. Mint changed the metal composition of the circulated dime from 90% silver to copper and nickel clad. This is called a transition year. It's always good to weigh your transition year coins to see if it was struck on the old planchet. Dimes from 1964 and earlier should weigh 2.5 grams. Copper nickel clad dimes minted 1965 and later should weigh about 2.27 grams. 
This 1965 nickel graded mint state 62. It weighed in at 2.5 grams, but the copper nickel planchet should weigh 2.27 grams. Because this dime was minted on the old silver planchet, it sold at auction for $14,400. Take a look at the reverse of this dime. Now take a look at the obverse of this dime. Someone at the Mint had to be playing games to mint a dime like this. We don't even know what the date is. At least they could have identified the planchet as copper nickel clad or silver. This double reverse dime graded Mint State 64 and it sold at auction for $26,400. This is a crazy looking dime error. On first glance, it looks like it's a penny, but on the back of the penny is the reverse of a dime. One of the men employees loaded the coin press with an obverse penny die and a dime reverse die. This error is referred to a penny muled with a dime reverse. It was graded Mint State 66 red. Not many dimes out there are going to have the red designation. This penny-dime combo sold at auction for $114,000. Earlier in this video, we talked about the 1983 proof no-S dime. This is the 1975 no-S proof dime, not to be confused with the Business Strike 1975 no-S dime. Business Strike dimes, which are the dimes you see in circulation all the time, without the mint mark, are perfectly normal. These are very common, and the lack of the mint mark simply means the dime was minted in Philadelphia. If you have a proof dime, which will be found enclosed in plastic in a 1983 proof set, that's a different story. Proof dimes were minted in San Francisco in 1983, and each of them are supposed to have an S because they were minted in San Francisco. The 1983 no S proof dime is extremely rare and valuable. This one was graded Proof 68, and it sold at auction for over $450,000. Make sure you check your 1983 proof sets if you have them. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.